How you doing guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to explain why really specific interest-based targeting is no longer effective for your Facebook ads. So obviously we are all aware of the iOS 14 update. For those that are not, uh, basically Apple, iOS, you know, they announced that uh, tracking nowadays will be uh, decided by the person holding the device. So as soon as iOS 14.5 came into play, people were uh, receiving a notification on their phone each time they opened an app for the first time, asking that user whether or not they wanna be tracked by third party services like Facebook. Now, the way this is worded and the reputation that Facebook has uh, on and offline, a lot of people actually decided to opt out of tracking. Now, Facebook already anticipated this and put into place, you know, a few uh, changes within the, you know, business manager and so on and so forth. One being the aggregated event measurement, which basically means that despite the fact that people have opted out, you can still track as much as you possibly can through uh, verifying the domain, setting up certain events that you wanna prioritize over others, and so on and so forth. But that is not what this video is about today. This video is about the changes that have been made to the tracker. Now, obviously, when you are running Facebook ads, um, you know we always recommend going for conversion campaigns. And the reason being, is because Facebook already knows prior to you setting up the ad what kind of person it should aim for. So let's say, for example, um, you know we are currently based in the Netherlands, so I'll just take the Netherlands for an example here. The Netherlands has roughly 17 million people and 11 million people on Facebook. So we've got an audience of 11 million people here. And within those you know, 11 million people, there are people that are, you know, people that just like to engage with, you know, content on Facebook. So those are the engagers. You've got, uh, out of those 11 million people, you've got an audience that just like to click on things. You know, just like to browse, you know, they like to um, see where advertisements go to. They like to click through, etc. but don't really take any action. Um, so those are people that are most likely to see ads if you set up a traffic campaign. And then within that 11 million audience, there is also an audience that is most likely to purchase. So obviously a lot of websites nowadays have uh, cookie trackers and so on and so forth. And based on your behavior online, Facebook can already determine whether or not you are someone that is most likely to purchase. So if you have purchased in the past through a Facebook advertisement or you've clicked on an advertisement that says shop now or anything along those lines, Facebook will see you as a high quality audience, which means that if someone sets up a conversion campaign with a product or an item or a service that Facebook thinks you will resonate with, you will see those ads. So when you set up a conversion campaign, you will be basically telling Facebook to show your ads to people that are most likely to convert. When you set up a traffic campaign, you will tell Facebook, or you're basically telling Facebook that you want uh, people to see this that are most likely to click through. And the same goes for engagement, same goes for lead generation, and so on and so forth, okay? So with that in mind, the fact that Facebook already knows what kind of person is most likely to do the action that you wanted to do on the ad, we now need to look at the interest-based targeting and also the fact that a percentage of people have opted out of tracking. So back to the 11 million people in the Netherlands, as I said, out of those 11 million, maybe only 1 million people are most likely to convert. So these have um, you know, an online buyer's behavior, uh, they do a lot of online shopping and so on and so forth because out of those 11 million people that you could potentially reach, not everyone is going to buy online. For example, older people you know, are a bit more hesitant to buy online, but as the younger generations, they are more used to it, they understand how things work with Afterpay and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, out of those 11 million people, there might only be a million people that are most likely to convert for purchase. Now, here's where iOS 14 comes into play, because out of those 1 million people that you can potentially target, maybe 50% of those people have already opted out of tracking, which means that you cannot target those people. You cannot retarget those people, you cannot do anything with those people because those people have said to Facebook, we don't want to see relevant ads, we don't want to be tracked, we don't want you know to be followed around online. Therefore, if let's say for example you are 
um, you have a certain swimwear brand and this person usually is interested in swimwear, has a online buyer's behavior of buying a lot of swimwear online. If you then target those people, but they have opted out of tracking, Facebook can't really show swimwear ads to that person because that will be seen as you know unethical because those people have opted out of tracking. So when we set up our ads, in this case, you know, we have targeted the whole of the Netherlands, you know, all of the ages, all the genders, and so on and so forth, which basically means we can target 11 million people. But we've set up a conversion campaign, which means that we'll actually, in reality, only be targeting roughly 1 million people for this example. Um, and then out of those 1 million people, 50% might have opted out. So where you think you're targeting 11 million people, which is a good enough audience to target on Facebook, in reality, you're only targeting 500,000 people. And that is when targeting broad. Now, let's say that we are using interest-based targeting. I'm just going to quickly decrease the size of my uh, thickness here. There we go. So let's say we are targeting the whole of the US. No idea how many people are in the US that are active on Facebook, uh, but let's say it's uh, 100 million people. Then we tell Facebook, okay, I don't want to target the whole of the US. I only want to target people that are interested in fishing. Okay, so out of those people that are interested in fish, uh, out of the 100 million people, there is, um, let's say, 10 million people interested in fishing. Okay, now within that 10 million audience, we are going to find an audience that is most likely to convert because we set up a conversion campaign, which might only be 100,000 people. So that's 100K, okay? Then out of those 100,000 people, it might be that 50% of those people have opted out of tracking, which means that we are only targeting 50,000 people. So when you see in the ads manager, the estimated reach might be 10 million, in reality, that might only be 50,000 people. And you can also check this by going to the inspect element tool in the ads manager to see what your frequency is and what your total audience reaches. And you'll notice that it's nowhere near as big as what Facebook are saying your estimated reach or your potential reach can be with the campaign. Okay, so that is why going forward, we actually don't really use interest based targeting anymore. Facebook has already come out and said, you know, uh, interest based targeting is becoming obsolete. We no longer use it. And that is why uh, for a lot of the future business managers and ad accounts, and maybe even your ad account as well for you watching this, um, you will see that the expanded reach by default will be already switched on. And that is when you see this notification that I've got here, your inputs are used to guide ad delivery. So that means that Facebook will no longer exclusively use your interest to target with Facebook ads, but it will use that as inspiration almost while setting up the campaigns. To help improve performance, we may deliver ads beyond your detailed targeting inclusions, but we won't deliver ads to people outside your age, gender, location, and language selections. So what Facebook is saying here, is that they will look at the interest you select, but they won't use that as an exclusive targeting parameter. They will use your age and gender as an exclusive targeting parameter, but no longer the interest. Facebook wants you to select the broadest audience possible so that Facebook's AI and Facebook's pixel can learn what person is most likely to convert and go after those people. That is also where the learning phase comes in. So when you set up campaigns, you'll see that for the first seven days, it will say that it is learning. What Facebook is trying to do is generate 50 conversions in a seven day period to understand better which person is most likely to convert to find more people like that. That is why for the first seven days of you running a campaign, you might have three pages on day one, no pages on day two, one page is on day three, and so on and so forth. It'll be very hard to figure out whether or not the campaign is performing correctly. Then over seven days of not touching the campaign at all, you'll notice a lot more stability in your advertising campaigns. And that has also got to do with the feedback loop. So the feedback loop is where Facebook checks how many people go through your flow and how many people actually hit the event that you want to optimize for. So let's say you've got your ad, you've got your landing page, you've got your checkout page, and then you've got your thank you page. So the thank you page is what people uh, hit when they place an order, right? On your thank you page, you've got the purchase pixel. So the purchase event is on your thank you page, which means every single time someone hits the thank you page, they have placed an order, and then the pixel events will be fired back to Facebook. So obviously, you know, Facebook is here, they set up the ads, um, and then, you know, people will be 
driven through to the flow. So every time someone hits that purchase event, that feedback gets sent to Facebook. And then Facebook receives a little bit of information about that person and understands better what kind of person is most likely to purchase. And then based on that, Facebook will show the ad to either more of the same people or different people entirely because it thinks that you know there's better people out there with similar interests as the one that just placed an order. So this feedback loop takes place primarily in the first seven days of the, you know of you setting up the campaign, which is the learning phase. So that is why we also highly recommend you not to touch ads for at least seven days once you've basically submitted the campaign because Facebook is still learning about who it's most likely to convert. Same goes for traffic. If you are optimized for traffic, Facebook will think, okay, I need to find people that are most likely to click on the campaign, not necessarily purchase. So we just get a lot of people that are most likely to, go to, to click and to, you know, to browse the website, but not likely to purchase. So that is why we always optimize for the highest quality purchase, uh, highest quality event, which in this case is purchase. And then Facebook will go out and find people that are most likely to purchase. And that is why what we try and do is go for the broadest audience possible within, of course, our parameters. So uh, we'll choose the location, we'll choose the gender, we'll choose the age, and then we let Facebook do its thing. So hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions on interest-based targeting or targeting on Facebook in general, just leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.